What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are heading to probably my least favourite Grand Prix to drive at any time of the year. It is the one and only Monaco Grand Prix. As always, if you do enjoy my slide into madness that I seem to take every time I drive a Grand Prix race in this series, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And yeah, if you missed out on the last episode, well, we went into Imola and we had a mega qualifying session um, and ended up mucking it up a little bit at the start of the race, having a bit of a tangle with Russell, but we did manage to recover and finish in eighth. So again, a good result for us. We got points on the board and again, in terms of the standings of where we are constructors wise, we've solidified that sixth spot. And hopefully we can go into Monaco and put in another good stint. So I'm going to get practice underway, get that all sorted, and I'll see you in qualifying. So here we are then, folks. It is qualifying time. Got some decent practice in. Thankfully no damage into the walls or anything like that. And we did okay. Let's see how we do here, though. Again, of course, we've had some great qualifying laps over the past few races. But whether we'll be able to do it at Monaco is a whole other level of test. And we know how important qualifying is at Monaco. It practically sets up the race results. So as high as we can get, we will take. And a decent start to proceedings. Just trying to use all the ERS that we can. Go into the chicane, not go over the lines. Don't want to muck it up. Keeping out the walls, that's the most important thing. Don't want my engineers to have to spend all night in the garage. A bit of a mistake on that chicane there. And now it's going to be straight line speed to the finish. And what well, felt like a decent lap at the start fell away with that mistake in the chicane at the end and we start 15th here we go then engineers already said points finish might not be in the offing and we're starting on the hard tyres Leclerc not having a great start to proceedings he's down in 12th and again it's just staying out of trouble in these first couple of laps more so than any other race just trying to survive here Again, we're so many... Oh, we've already bumped into a wall. That's a good start, isn't it? And again, Hulkenberg already nipping in front of us. And we're going to have a bunch of medium tyre wearers nipping out of heels. And we go side by side with Nico and get in front. Oh, and we've bumped a front wing off. Fantastic. We're going to have to try and drive and see how it feels. Not as badly damaged as the other... As the other time we've done it in Miami. Miami. Oh, the turn's not great. To the right-hand side, anyway. Left-hand side, we're all right. Turning back onto the right feels absolutely atrocious. And it's really frustrating because we're on the hard tyres now. If we're on the mediums, I'd have gone, right, let's just go on the hards and do a really long stint. Oh, this is going terribly as the first lap goes. Let's see if we can drive a couple of laps without clipping our wings or doing any damage. But first lap, not great. Yeah, the right turns are particularly tricky with this, <laughs> with this less than ideal front wing. And just trying to make the best of what we can here. I don't think we're going to be catching anyone in front of us. But I certainly don't think there's going to be many opportunities for people to pass us. Maybe on the DRS straight, but that's about it. Again, the backpack very much getting backed up by us at the minute. No tire concerns at the moment, just focus on the driving. And a quick lap for us, or a quicker lap on the second time round. Couldn't exactly be much slower considering we didn't hit the wall. But again, oh! Gaz is going down the inside and he's made an overtake stick there. Fair play to him. This might be a miserable day at the office. 
Oh, I had to bail out there. Wasn't going to make it. And we've been given a three second time penalty. It's getting even worse. We're going to be bottom of the pack by the end of this race. Oh. Just when I broke there, it didn't want to turn. Trying to slow the car down. It's just such a fight to get round these corners. And it's... Monaco is not only a, a test of of speed and or anything else, it's more a test of the mind. Because of how many laps you've got to put in, how tight the track is, how big your car is in comparison to the track, makes it so difficult to manoeuvre. And I've never been one to be good at Monaco. But this is... Uh, this is easily feeling like the worst race we've had so far. Even worse than Saudi Arabia, which was pretty bad at times. So heading into lap six and the Haas is very much gaining on us. And to be fair, we're doing pretty well not to have any further incidents. Car's feeling relatively okay, I think, because we burnt a bit of fuel off. It feels a bit lighter and a bit more nimble, not as, obviously, tip-top shaped like we would want it to be. But it's still a little bit better now that it's lost a bit of the fuel weight. But again, we've still got 21 laps to go and I just can't see how we're going to survive that long without falling back even further. And the pit stop time is going to be even longer as a result. Doing everything we can just to stay in the race. Hopefully a safety car comes along and gives us something to to cling on to. But again, just trying to keep it out the wall and stay out of trouble. Come on, push hard. Caution, caution. Oh, and just when we needed it, there's a safety car. We managed to get ourselves in. And there's been a red flag. So our very first red flag at Monaco. I don't think we've had a proper safety car all year um, so far. And then we, it turns into a full red flag. So let's see what we can do about the strategy. So here we go then. Starting again. I don't even know if they fix fixed my wing. They have fixed my wing. Oh well. We get a reprieve, heading into turn one. We're still in 10th, no 10th, sorry, 11th. Staring down the back of 10th. The car ahead's so we've got a bit of reprieve and we held on and thankfully we didn't pit for that wing. I did send us in, oh God, not the time to lock up there, Perez. Oh, we're back in it. Can we nip inside Perez there? I think we can. We can squeeze around the curb. Oh, that's tight. We got a warning for that, even though I didn't initiate the contact. But never mind. Let's keep going. We're in this now. Again, just trying to navigate the walls and not get into any trouble. It's going to be difficult to get top 10, but we might be able to make it through to the end of the race now, now that we've got the proper wing attached. Off. Oh, Sergeant's out of the session. I don't know what's happened there, but I've just remembered we still have that three second penalty to, to go through once we pit. So we're still probably going to end up at the back of the pack. Unfortunately, but we've been putting in better times now that we've got the proper wing on. I'm managing to keep the tyre wear down as well, as is the objective you can see on screen right now. But, of course, Perez and Co are just pulling away at the minute. Thankfully, Monaco is only once a year, so I don't have to worry about this again. <laughs> oh, Ocon's pulled over, and we've moved up into 10th. 
So there we go. A bit of luck there. I don't know. It looked like he locked up based on the smoke that was going on. Around his tyres. So a bit of a costly mistake for Ocon, but it, it benefits us and moves us up into 10th. My engineer is just reminding me that we're in the top 10, but again, I don't know how long it's going to be for because of the three-second penalty. And we're going to have to pit at some point to observe it. But again, we're still driving pretty smoothly. We've not had any collisions with any more walls or anything. Just trying to take a little bit more risk here or there, but not nothing too exaggerated. So Magnussen's just come in for his pit stop. So we're going to push this lap to come in. He's trying the undercut, and we'll try and block it off. And then we'll have the last 10 laps or so on the mediums. So here we go then, pit stop time. Obviously got to reserve, observe the penalty as well. So Hulkenberg's going to get in front of us at least. Magnussen's coming around that last bit of chicane. And it wasn't too bad to be fair. Oh, we're not getting, we're not observing the penalty. Right, okay, we've got to, so we've got to do it on track. Great, okay. And Magnussen's coming around now. And we stay out in front of him. But again, how much can we get in front? And can we get a three-second gap? That's the question now. So a lap or two since the pit stop. And you can see we've made another second up of time on KMAG. And we've just put a purple sector in as well. So pace is come alive a bit in the car now that we're in the latter stages and on a bit of a quicker tyre of course still a lot of work to do though we've got to keep pushing so we are closing up to the Alpines about 4 seconds or so behind we've got about 2.5 seconds gap now to KMAG tyre's still looking alright with 6 to go But I don't think the guys in front of us will be pitting, so may not be in the points today. But if we survive Monaco, I'll fully take that. You can see close proximity now. We're about five or six laps to go. Got Ocon very much in our view. Whether we're going to be able to make a passing overtake, I don't know, but... I don't know if the hards will be coming in for another stop. I would imagine they aren't. I imagine they've probably swapped onto the hards from the red flag. And they're trying to do a long stint to the end. I'm just going to have to try and keep as close to him. Keep the momentum to him as close as possible. Oh, we've just wiped out. Oh, that's so unfortunate. We were doing really well there. And we just got into... Contention for an overtake. I just wonder if being behind in the turbulent air maybe causes us to make that mistake there. Oh, we've gone off track, so it's going to be your retirement, unfortunately, at Monaco. Unfortunate to see it's a first retirement of our career. But it happens in F1, and especially at Monaco, where it's so dangerous. Let's see what Yuki did. Did he manage to get any points on the board for us? Yuki did. He got two points on the board, which is good for us. Well, it's good for the team. Maybe not good for us when we've had to retire the car. Our engines might be a little bit damaged now as well with that big shunt. Um, but Max continues to win. Um, and yeah. Unfortunately, folks, that's all it is for today. I was hoping we were going to get some overtakes done and, and try and get past Ocon, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. If you've enjoyed my descent into madness, because I've very much been tearing my hair out doing this race, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one.